Today I will give you lots of tips to improve your chess. I will be playing against players of different strength so we can see exactly what we need to do in order to get to the next level. Let's go. Let's go everybody. We have the white pieces and we love to put a pawn in the center of the board. They are playing the Scandinavia and in my opinion this opening is not one of the best opening chess because rule number one, do not bring the queen out too early because the queen is potentially weak in the center of the board okay maybe this was a mouse slip i don't like but anyway don't bring the queen out too early uh, i'm going to develop the knight here and to just protect this pawn or maybe i could actually protect it with a pawn because it's the most direct way if i protect it with the knight they are going to, to attack it one more time and then they're actually uh, going to take it so i protect it with the pawn and nobody's going to capture it rule number two push one or two pawns in the opening and push just one if it's really necessary now it felt like important to protect the pawn so i can have an extra pawn that's why i'm pushing a side pawn if not i would give priority to my knight development and to my bishop rule number three trade just if it's necessary in this situation if i'm not Okay, I actually, it's not necessary to trade. I can just protect it with the knight. And if the pawn is taking, I'll take back with my knight. And I will have a super strong knight in the center of the board. Rule number four, three, four. I don't know. <laughs> Bring your knight to the center of the board. Actually, every piece is much stronger to the center of the board. The knight especially is controlling here eight squares. And eight very important squares. Already here, it could be a fork. So the knight is really super powerful. Now the knight is attacking our knight, we could trade or we could try to defend the pawn. Now, if we just let the knight be taken, after pawn takes we lose a pawn, but also even if we can just protect this uh, knight one more time, we will have two double pawns. That's why this is one of the situations where I like to trade. They are taking back and this is already a weakness. Double pawns on the same files are weak. Rule number five you have to develop all your pieces so we will go with the knight out then with the bishop here then with castle um and then maybe we'll go with rule number six that is actually rule number zero control the center with a pawn this is something that you always have to do but all things comes to there is always a checklist of things that you have to do at the beginning of the game like control the center develop all your pieces castle your king but some have more of a higher priority and the king is one of them. The king is always the highest priority. You lose the king, you lose the game. So I want to make sure that my king gets to security. Now, my king is actually not really in danger because it's protected by, shielded by this bishop, by this pawn. So I could think about playing the move before. There is just one check that I have to take care of and is this one. But I could just play queen d2, trade the queens if needed. Oh yeah, I was about to cast. No, I want to play d4. <laughs> All right, the queen is moving there. That's a strange idea. Always look. Always, when your opponent makes a move, always ask, what's their idea? The queen is attacking this pawn and I need to protect it. I could castle. And I think this is a very simple way to protect the pawn with the king. But remember, the g pawn is actually really weak. Because it's just protected by the king. So for example, if black could play pawn pushes and bishop there, I might be in danger. So we have to look out to watch out for these moves. Oh, that's really smart. Look at them. Look at them. You're bringing the rook here. And now if they move this bishop, for example, they take that pawn, I will be losing <laughs> nearly because it's checkmate. I will play a very smart move. This is actually super, super, super smart because I'm going to prepare a defense by a discovery check. Yeah, now they say, oh no, my bishop. Actually, they are really good players because if I would take, I'm getting mated, but I will play bishop f1 check. I am protecting the checkmate with my bishop by giving a check. So every time you give a check is a forced move because your opponent has to move the king or anyway, defend it, interfere with the check. They have to take care of it. And now this bishop is going to be hanging for real. So that was actually a blunder, but it was actually a very good move for the level of my opponent. The bishop is interfering with the check, but I think, okay, actually I will take with the knight. That's really fun because I'm threatening another discovery check and the queen is also under attack. So I'm not sure where the queen moves, 
And if the queen doesn't move to the right square, I'm having the most beautiful checkmate in a while. Because it's going to be a discovery checkmate. That's really rare. The queen is controlling now those two squares in front uh, next to the king. All right, is this checkmate? Oh, maybe that's not checkmate. No. But okay, I have checkmate in two actually. So I can give this beautiful discovery check. I'm giving a check with the rook and and with the rook. And the knight is actually just controlling those two very important squares. So if the king moves or if the bishop covers, I can slide my queen all the way to d8. And that's mine. All right, I've changed account, meaning that now we have a different level, but we always start with placing a pawn in the center of the board. I recommend you to play either 1e4 or 1d4 to start with a good chess opening. Now my opponent is responding with a very standard e45. They are also putting a pawn in the center of the board. I will go with my knight out, attacking this pawn, and then I will bring my bishop out, looking at... Wow. This is called Rosse Gambit. I'm very confused because usually we say that you shouldn't push this pawn because suddenly uh this diagonal is getting really weak i'm not sure what my opponent has in mind but it's always important to try to understand what's their idea if we take they have something in mind and i think it's to play the move d5 that's why we play d4 i'm attacking the center Imagine if the pawn is now taking, I could take the central pawn with the knight, and then I'm threatening queen h5, check. <laughs> Which is going to be really strong. The queen check here is just deadly if there is also a knight on e5. Remember this pattern. If the queen is also supported by the knight, that's just too strong. Now, I think they took there. I'm not sure if I'm going to take back, because maybe I have something even stronger. I could maybe play knight there attacking this this square because the knight is protected by the bishop i think i will go for this because this looks like a fried liver no and do you know what's the typical defense in the fried liver it's to play d5 but after d5 i can simply take with the bishop and i'm still attacking so knight h6 was actually a great idea to defend over there i will just castle i think i will just castle i'm ready to place a rook on the e file and the point is that this bishop cannot really go out, because if the bishop moves away, I'm giving a check here, and after g6 this knight is hanging. That's the only thing that is saving white right now, black right now. Giving a check, if this pawn is pushing, I take a free knight. Oh, that's so juicy. <laughs> and I'm threatening mate with the bishop. Mate with the bishop. Now, they are taking there, which is saving them from getting checkmated, but the queen <laughs> is really in bad shape in terrible shape we'll play queen g7 we're sneaking in there is just one move to defend the mate but we go with the bishop attacking one more time this rook if the rook is moving we have bishop f7 check mate and the rook cannot be protected one more time so maybe they can just resign here which is crazy the only move to avoid mate is actually to play d6 or d5 but i guess i can simply take this rook yeah i'm sorry <laughs> yeah we take the rook now there are two ways to win this game. One, you trade the queens, you trade all the pieces because I have plus seven points and you win the game. But I like I like to also play for the mates. Okay, they just resigned here. Uh, here, like, there is a mate incoming in a few moves. I can go with the bishop there. The king has to go there. Then maybe I can try to bring my, my knight to the attack. Anyway, remember, once you are winning, there are two ways to win your games. One, simplify, trade pieces, Get to an endgame and it will be much easier for you to convert it to a win. Number two, you have more pieces. So if you attack the enemy king, you will be able to give a quick checkmate. All right, we have our highest level. We are playing a player around 1500 Dilo, Dijol. And we also place a pawn in the center of the board. We go with the knight out, attacking this pawn. And they are coping us, uh, copying us. This is the patch of defense, and the idea is that if I take this pawn, they are also attacking this one. Now, actually, taking this pawn is a mistake, because there is a nice tactic with queen e2, and then there is a discovery check with the knight. You need to know that if you don't. And this is the stuff for Gambit, an opening made popular by Eric Rosen. But that's a bad opening. <laughs> if you know what I'm about to show you. So, I have an extra pawn right now, because I took this pawn and now I'm trading the knight. But this pawn is under attack. 
Now, I recommend you for the simplest way to approach this is to push this pawn and attack this knight. This knight will have to move. Uh, those are the two squares available. This is the best move. Ooh. This is the best move, but uh, it's not tricky enough. Usually players like to go with the knight there because there are some tricks. Now the knight is here, the knight is protected by the bishop, so I can't take it. There is this pawn that is right now hanging, and also the knight is looking at f2, which is always a very vulnerable point. But here it comes really natural to play the move d4. I'm controlling the center, supporting the pawn on e5, uh, also like letting this bishop go out, be happy. And the only thing I still need to take care of is, for example, if the queen was there, to defend this pawn. Now, there is a check I could cover in so many ways, but I will do it with a pawn. Because now I have the connected force and you automatically win a game. Ah, no, it's not this game, sorry. So, we, we don't win automatically, but uh, it, it's fun. Okay, I think we can just keep going with the development here. So, I will play either bishop there or bishop d3, one of these two moves. I'm thinking about h3 also, just to send this knight back. Okay, let's play first h3, because I don't want to be in trouble after a move like queen h4, attacking maybe uh, h2 and f2 at the same time. So we play h3, we send the knight back uh, homey, and then we will develop the bishop. What? Okay, this is just a senseless sacrifice, in my opinion. I, I really don't see... The point is that if you want to be able to attack, you need to have pieces for it. Now, my opponent has a bishop here that is half dead, and there's a bishop here that actually cannot exploit, cannot attack all the dark squares. That are the weakest square for me right now. So, I think just they don't have pieces. Uh, here I could just hide my king, but also this move is just looking good. The queen has this square, but then I bring my bishop out. I will do this. I'm just attacking the queen. The queen has to move one more time, and now I will play bishop there. And the queen needs to go back here. The, the point is they just don't have pieces to attack. I will now hide my king to h2. Every time your king is out, try to reconstruct a castling situation artificially. For example, here I can bring my king there and then bring the rook out. And remember, the idea of castling is not just to bring the king to security, but it's also to bring out the rook, to be able to let the rook join the party. That's why I'm now wasting a bit of time, actually investing a bit of time to move my king to safety plus bringing the rook to the party. Now the queen is here. Let's be careful about this square because uh, it's a bit vulnerable. I will just bring out the bishop. I'm ready to play the move d5 if you let me. And I have two super strong spawns in the center of the board. Boom! There we go, the queen is under attack. All right, the rook is sacrificed because if I take there, they want to take here. My opponent is playing with fire, but they are getting burned by this fire because they don't have it under control. Yeah, this was a wrong tactic, but I understand the idea. If I would take here with the bishop, there would be this pawn hanging. Actually, this is not even a big deal because after this, well, there is this check that is actually annoying, but I still have rook f2. And even if they take there, take there, they have a check. My king can still be protected like this. If the bishop goes there, I can bring a queen to g1, h1, whatever. The queens are going to be traded. And here I still have, <laughs> wow, two extra pieces. Let's play one final game against a player around 1500. Because my player before was a tricky player. Uh, let's try to see, okay, we have maybe another tricky player, f4. Oh, by the way, a very important tip, do not play for tricks. If you want to improve your chess at some point, you need to stop playing for tricks, but you can still play aggressive strong moves. So moves that have a downside for your opponent, but have no downsides for you if your opponent plays the best move. Now, we will go for the counter gambit. We are, I played this against Magnus Carson. And he played the move d4, and then I was already, oh my gosh, how do I maintain the control of the center? Now I know how to do it. If you want, you can check out that video. Um, here the most played move is actually to take this pawn. Trading a central pawn for a central pawn. And then I have two options. One, to go for the gambit. What? <laughs> they are playing like Magnus Carson. <laughs> oh man, okay. So here I have to take... I have to take this pawn. In the game with Magnus, I took this one, and then Magnus took there, and then he had already two central pawns. And then it was a very interesting game. Anyway, here I'm playing the right move, 
Well, not the right move. Both are okay, but this is much more clear because I'm trading a central pawn for a central pawn and I'm not letting white take capture my other central pawn. Now, the most natural move would be to bring the knight here attacking the queen, but I would lose a pawn. That's why the best move here is to just go with the knight out, protecting this pawn, attacking this one, and I already have a very, very decent position. When Magnus played his opening, he said, this comes with a recommendation, do not try this at home, don't repeat this, just Magnus can play this opening. Now, you have already a very strong knight in the center of the board, and that knight is very strong together with a queen here. So now I have to see, can I go with this check? I think yes. There is just one difference, and is that after bing, bong, I take, there is queen f2. But I want a pawn, I can go with the knight back, but there is this pawn hanging. Okay, I'll play first this move, I'm pinning. <gasps> what the fuck? I blundered a piece. Um, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Well... <laughs> This is embarrassing. <laughs> wow, okay. I blundered a piece, but my opponent didn't see it. How lucky can you be? Okay. <laughs> now we have different moves. We could play c5, we would play knight there. I, I promise, I played best. I played better than this against Magnus. He was very happy, even gave me a nice gift that you can see on the background. <laughs> so I think I would play c5 here. Imagine I take this pawn. I would be very happy to... When a queen, that would be great. There are no, not so many good squares for, for the queen here. But at the same time, this tactic, maybe I didn't say it, is no longer working because after g3, if I take, there is this knight protecting this pawn. So this tactic is unfortunately no longer possible. I think the best way is to go maybe here with the queen because after this fork, there is this knight hanging, so that doesn't work. Maybe the queen could also go back home. I'm not sure if that is best, because if the queen goes back there, I can just push this pawn and I win a knight, as they are not attacking. Yeah, it seems like best, because it seems like, oh, if the queen is there, it's even a fork, I'm even attacking one more time the queen. At least like this, it seems okay, at least I have, yeah, this move. What's up here? I will take here, I have something very fun in mind. I think they will have to take with the pawn, and then maybe I want to play this move anyway. Yeah, I want to play this no matter what. And the point is that I traded a, a piece, now I might give my opponent some pawns, but I'm going with queen h4, and this is so strong, because after g3 I can take, if the knight takes, yo, there we go, if the knight, after g3 I take, if the knight takes, ooh, the queen, oh ho ho, so they have actually, the only move here is to take with the pawn, but then I'm winning the rook, they can still take another pawn, so they, they got some pawns uh, as compensation, but I still think I have really a lovely lovely position there we go we take the rook and remember right now i actually have a rook my opponent has a piece in this case they have a bishop and they also have a few pawns they have one pawn so i took five points they have four points and do they have compensation no <laughs> they don't have any compensation here because this king is actually very weak my king is very safe I'm going to play knight here. I'm going to bring the rook there. I'm going to play bishop h3. This bishop is in big danger. Now, if I would play bishop h3, maybe there was like king f2. And then this bishop was protected. Uh, that's why I just said, okay, let's bring the knight out. This is a very sensible move. Maybe I can go with the rook there, attacking the queen. Go with the knight on d4. Hoy oh boy, that's super tough to defend for them. And this is an important tip that is valid to every chess level always try to get the most out of every single piece people say usually like how do i make a plan in chess it feels like difficult because there are so many different positions there are so many different plans but this is one plan that can help you so much in every single situation try to improve your least at least active piece for example now my rooks can be improved i could like castle and then slowly bring the other rook to the party but hey i'll go forward with the knight now that's a pain and i'm also <laughs> my knight is sneaking in to some very very nasty squares all right the pawn is attacking the knight i can see a beautiful checkmate i'm going to give a check the king is just one square just one square to go. Unfortunately, I don't have a checkmate. If the king goes there and queen g1, 
is not hanging. I have mate, so I'm going to take here first. I'm attacking the queen. And I think the queen would go to give this check here. But now the knight is pinned. So I'm actually threatening this move. I will, I will just go. Yeah, I will just move my king here. And it seems like, oh, my king is running out in danger. Like there is maybe a rook there. And then a check here. I'm about to give mate. I'm about to get mated. But actually, this is going to be a pin checkmate. Because the knight cannot take. And the knight is protected by the bishop as well. So if they take here, yes. I hope the game ends here. Yes. <laughs> you know that feeling when you give checkmate and then <gasps> it doesn't stop? Okay. It's not in this case. GG's. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If we get to at least 669 likes, we make this a weekly series. Promise. <laughs> um, so like and subscribe also. So we get to 100,000 subs would be really like, there will be a big party for that. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Ciao.